Hey, what's up? It's Shandice from Gigglezilla, and today I want to walk you through how I teach toddlers their ABCs and their 1-2-3s. I'm going to share with you the very basic curriculum and lesson plan that I create, the schedule, and how I apply it. You can take this lesson plan and do the same thing at home with your kiddos. So something I think is really fun is to have a new lesson plan theme each month. So for example, in September, I will go through the ABCs and 123s curriculum that I'm gonna share with you guys today. During that lesson plan, we focus on letter recognition, phonics, counting, and numbers. So the first thing I do is break the month down by week and area of focus. The areas of focus include music and movement, language, gross motor, fine motor, uh, media, video, visual learning, dramatic play, and sensory learning. So one of the categories that I love is music and movement. This is such a fun way for kids to express themselves through dance, through song, through rhythms. And some kids are auditory learners. Music and movement may be just the key that they need to learn their ABCs and their one, two, threes. Another area that I focus on is language. It's really important for listening development and also for speech development. The next area is gross motor skills. Think about this as large muscle movements throwing a ball, kicking a ball, jump roping. These activities are critical for kids to learn balance and to learn coordination. Another really fun area for kids is sensory learning. It ignites all five of their senses. You're teaching them about their ABCs. Think about how they can use their hands, their eyes, their ears, taste sometimes, and then especially touch. Finally, my favorite area of focus is dramatic play, potentially because I'm a little bit of a drama queen, but I love interacting in imaginative play with kids. It's so fun to see where their mind goes, and this is an area of focus that is critical for social development. The reason I focus on these areas each month is because they have been deemed important for child development. So, in some months, I will pick five of these different areas, and in other months I'll have six of these areas, and sometimes I switch it around depending on what the child is interested in. Some kids love learning through dramatic play, others love music and movement. You know your kiddos best, so modify this to fit your child. Now that we've talked about the different areas of focus, you know that I break it down week by week, so now let's talk about what the individual day actually looks like. I love starting the day with free play. It gives the chance the kids to wake up, to eat breakfast, and to ease into the day. After free play, we move into music and movement and then gross motor, and then I incorporate another time for them to just have some free play. We have lunch, and then we read, and then it's time for their nap. I read right before nap time because I think it's a way for the kids to just kind of get in the zone of it's time to calm down and it's time to rest. If your kids are still napping, depending on the time that they nap, you can put your nap anywhere during this day, anywhere during this time. After nap time, we do our media and video learning and then we do some fine motor activities and I close the day out with more free play. It's great for kids to have structure and it's also really important that you give them time to explore and play however they wish. Feel free to start this in the evening after dinner or first thing when you wake up in the morning. This is their first introduction to their ABCs and their 1-2-3s. So if we take a look at this lesson plan, we are gonna read books. We will use an abacus to count to 10 in Spanish. We have dice that we will count on. We'll use our fingers and we will also watch a few episodes that teach kids how to count. And we'll do this week by week with different activities each week. And the hope, you guys, is that at the end of this month, they are familiar with their letters, they are familiar with their numbers. They may not be able to go through the entire alphabet or count to 100. What you're trying to do here is introduce these things to them so that by the time they get ready to go to school, they are equipped and they are ready to learn. 
So let's take a look at week one. The first thing on here is practice letter sign language. There's a song called See It, Say It, Sign It, and it walks the kids through their alphabet and their phonics while using sign language. The next thing on here is a book called Chicka Chicka Boom Boom ABC, and I would read this book to them and then I would point out the letters as I'm reading to them because we need letter recognition and we also need to learn phonics. Another thing I have on there is to use an abacus to teach the kids to count to 10 in Spanish. Super simple, just a basic abacus. If you don't have one of these, you could use beans, you could use beads, you can pretty much use anything around your house. So all I do is show them this abacus and they usually want to touch it and move it around, which is fine. And then you just go bead by bead. Uno, have them repeat it. Uno, dos, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Keep in mind, the first time you show them this, they're gonna have no idea what you're saying, but with time and repetition, they will start counting in Spanish. I have seen it happen. And the best way for them to learn this is to do it at least once, maybe even twice a day. The next thing on here is roll and count numbers on a giant dice. Now this is really fun. I ordered these giant dice on Amazon and basically you take turns rolling the dice and then the kids count the number of dice. Whatever lands face up, they count the dots on the dice. And then the last thing for week one is to watch an episode of uh, Numbers Counting by Little Baby Bum. And again, if your kid is a visual learner, this might be really fun for them. And what I do when I go through this entire week, I repeat these same activities every day based on that daily schedule. And I promise you guys, by the end of the week, I hear them starting to sing their ABCs. I see them starting to point out letters that they see around their house. I hear them counting to their self in Spanish. Like even after one week of repetition and learning their ABCs and one, two, threes. So now I will show you guys a couple of the activities that I do with this specific lesson plan. In week two, under gross motor skill development, there's an activity called the alphabet beanbag toss. It is super simple, you guys. All you need is bean bags. I got these on Amazon from Educational Insights. They have letters on the front of them. So you need the bean bags with the letters and a basket of some kind to catch the letters in. That's it. So this is what the game looks like. It's super fun. Kids love playing this game. I've played it with multiple families and they just have a blast. They love throwing stuff. This is a safe way for them to throw stuff. Hold the bag open like this. Allow them to dig their hand around inside the bag. And again, we play this in week two because we need them to have a little bit of letter recognition already for this game to actually be fun for them. Dig their hand in the bag, pull out a letter. As we can see, these have the uppercase letter on the front and the lowercase letter on the back. You show them the letter and you connect the phonic sound to the letter. So they'll pull the letter out. You can ask them first, what letter is this? If they don't know, you can tell them. This is the letter N. N makes the N sound. N, N. After they say the letter, you take the bean bag and you toss it into the basket. And you just keep digging in this bag, finding letters for them to say and toss. A, A, A. That's it, you go through the whole bag and you're done. Super fun game. In week three, under fine motor, there's an activity called Q-tip letter trace. You need a piece of paper, Q-tips, and paint. That's it. So what you'll do is on the piece of paper, write the letters. Make sure you write them large enough that they can trace them. Keep in mind, their fine motor skills are not super developed yet. I usually start with uppercase because it's a little bit easier for kids to learn. Make sure you leave enough space in between the letters because keep in mind, they're gonna make mistakes. They're gonna mess up, right? So they need a little bit more space than we would until they develop those skills. So go all the way through the alphabet until the entire page is filled up. Dip the Q-tip in the paint 
and let them start tracing the letters. This is great for developing hand-eye coordination and muscle control in their hands. And it's really fun. I love to paint and I know there's a lot of other kids that love to paint too. So go all the way through until they finish the entire page of letters. These activities are really fun for you to do at home with your kids on a rainy day. It's also a great introduction to homeschooling if that's something that you plan to do. This is a great way to introduce your kids to some learning and lesson plan and structure around their learning. So take this and run with it. Do it on a rainy day, do it every day. Um, let, let me know what you think. And if you found any value in these videos, then subscribe to this channel. Thanks guys. See, that was my fear. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's why I wanted a laundry basket. <laughs>